name. You who sits on the throne of glory will lift you up, oh God. You who rose again from the grave, Lord, will lift up your name. You who ascended on high, you who sits on the right hand side of God the Father, and you who sits at throne in glory. Today we come deliberately, Lord, to worship your name, to bless your name, to exalt your name, and to magnify you, oh God. So we encourage as many of us to show up 
and uh, we will spend time together calling on the name of the Lord. Do we this week, from Wednesday through Friday, we have a season of prayer and fasting. So we'll be fasting together, thank you, on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And we'll meet on Friday to conclude the prayer and fasting session together at 5.30, right here in the sanctuary. And so we encourage you to plan, and please log in. And join with us to pray on Wednesday as we start the fast right here during our, our prayer service at 5.30. Of course, we'll have started the fasting in the morning, and we'll have opportunity to pray together on Wednesday at 5.30 to 7, uh, to 7 in the evening. Then we pray alone on Thursday, Friday, we meet again and break our fast together. Are you excited about that? Thank you, and I plan, I, I hope that you plan to join, and we will call on the name of our Father together, we believe we will hear us. Hallelujah. I want to request us to stand before we continue. I want us to sing that song, Open the Front Gates, in abundance, and I want every one of us to open your heart and expect. We have been uh, sharing uh, on the Holy Spirit. And we see that the Holy Spirit desires that the only way He can work is when we yield to Him. And He wants to work in us and through us. Hallelujah. So I want you to yield. We don't want just to be in the service, but we want to be in the presence of God and be uh, intentional and say, Lord, have your way in me. The Holy Spirit, I say, He's the one preparing the church. He's the one working. He is the one at work. He is the comforter. He is the counselor. He is God with us. And not just with us, in us. Hallelujah. So I want us to sing that song. And uh, just in a minute, I want you to surrender to the Lord. If you can, you can lift up your hands. And you can forget other things. Uh, and just concentrate on the Lord. We trust the Lord will baptize us. We trust the Lord will come. We will, we will, we will transform us. We are here to be transformed. The Bible says Jesus is the image, express image of God. And we are being transformed into his likeness. It is the Holy Spirit who is doing this. But he is not doing it just like that. He is doing it to them that yield to him. And the church I want to watch us. Let's just yield to him. Even if you have burdened, just lift up your hand and say, Lord, I yield to you. Open the front gates in abundance. He is opening the front gates of heaven. The Bible says, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Come on, as we sing it, I want you to yield to him. I want you to lift up your hand. He is in the sanctuary. He is present here to do us good and to do his work and his purpose in the name of Jesus.
Holy Spirit, we worship you, Lord. We give you glory. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We are here for you. We are here for you. Touch me not, O gender, Celia. Hear my humble cry. When on others thou art calling, oh, do not touch me, but not the young. All the older, the mothers, the fathers, the men, the women, everyone, Holy Spirit, oh, we surrender this service to you. Have your way, have your way. Let none go away disappointed, Holy Spirit. Oh, lift us from our weakness, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Upon your servant, have your way. Upon your servant, have your way. Holy Spirit, you speak to us. Oh, Jesus, you are the baptizer. We trust you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We thank you. We worship you. Our Father, in Jesus' name, we surrender. We surrender. This is your service, Holy Spirit. This is your service. We ask like John said, we want to decrease as you increase, that you may have your way, and that you do your will this day, that everyone be lifted, Lord. Too much more than we ask or even think, because that is your promise. Be exalted and be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to lift up your hands above your hands and give Jesus a big now you can have your seats in his presence. I said in his presence. I said in his presence. I said in his presence. Come on, let's appreciate the, the, the music team. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Our time is spent and we want to have enough time uh, for the sharing of the word. Uh, two Sundays ago, on, uh, uh, I, I shared on Ephesians chapter 2, uh, chapter 1, verse 1 to 10, and our main verse was chapter 10, that we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works that were prepared in advance. And we say we are not trying just to discover. God is not trying to discover. He has laid works. He prepared in advance. It is us to walk in them. And that's why we need to understand. That's why we need no right to walk in them. Hallelujah. And I like that, uh, that verse uh, 43. It's a year verse 19. Behold, I do a new thing. Now it's preached forth. I'll make a way in the wilderness. He leads the way. And he causes rivers of water to come off and uh, help us as we walk through. Now that is what we trusted and we say we are raised up from the death of sin and raised up to become believers to walk in the works of God and do them. And Jesus did the works of God and when he finished, he went back to heaven. Now this is it. on uh, Sunday we shared on uh, Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 not by might, not by power, but by his spirit, says the Lord. Meaning as we walk and do this work, there is no position, it is not just a playground. We have an enemy and we need the power, we need to be bold, we need to press on. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. And I share on the works of the Holy Spirit because he's the one at work, he's the one working in us and through us as we do the works of God. Amen. And today, as we agreed, we will be uh, sharing and uh, uh, the word and we are trusting God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, I avoided that intentionally on Sunday to mention that and reserve it for today. But let me say this as I bring the minister. I, I look at the four gospel, the four gospel, that is Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Uh, we agree generally when God repeats something, something is repeated a number of times. Not necessarily that there are other things that are said once, they are not important, but when something is said many times and more times, there is an emphasis. And here is, if you do the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you baptize with the Holy Spirit. In Matthew 3 and 11, he says, 
He will really come. He will and baptize with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. In the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 8, he says, it's written again, even Mark penned it again. He will baptize with the Holy Spirit. In the book of Luke, chapter 3, and verse 16, is repeated, and uh, Luke is repeated with, says, you baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire, just like in Matthew. In John, chapter 1, and verse 32 and 33, is repeated. John says, I did know him, but I, when I, he, the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, when you, the one you see the Holy Spirit descend on him and remain on him, he is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Now, this baptism of the Holy Spirit, sometimes they're confused on and all, but you see the Bible is written, baptized, he will baptize with the Holy He will baptize with the Holy Spirit. And we trust the Lord today as we yield to him. I know the Lord has prepared and he will do it so that we need to understand and as we understand Jesus is the baptizer. We trust he will do it for us. So this morning we are privileged to have the servant of the Lord. He is uh, not to most of us because <laughs> and, uh, for us who have been in Sita, even those who are not in Sita, is our immediate Deputy Bishop, Reverend Ken Kimewe. He is the senior pastor. Let me let me would appreciate him. He is now ministering in Sita Thika Road as a senior pastor. And today, the Lord has given us the privilege that he will be able to minister. But we trust the Lord has prepared his servant. I say, yield to the Holy Spirit and allow Jesus to baptize you. Amen. And to lift us to another level. Because we're talking about next level. Uh, Bishop, we are, we are looking to next level. And we trust the Lord will put us there. Together with, uh, uh, with him is uh, Mom Joy. Accompanied her. They came together. This man is Because I understand that Mom Joy will be leaving because she has another uh, meeting that she has to attend. So when you see her leave, please understand. But uh, the servant of the Lord will continue. So I want us, as we put up, but I realize there is a friend of ours who just come in, Brother Koyel. Tom Koyel, please and Daryl, and the family that came in. Let us start, please start, Daryl, and the family. And uh, another, so this, this brother is Brother Koyel. We were together in Sitam Kare Lord. I was the pastor there. We were serving together in the family ministry. That is his son. And this is a part of the member of the family. I know I know the details. Thank you so much, Koyel, for coming to be with us the first time. And together with the rest of the visitors, please, we welcome you. Let's appreciate the visitors again. Thank you. And now I want to give this. Uh, opportunity to the servant of the Lord to come and uh, as we, he comes I want to say to you again forget about other things that look to Jesus. Let's appreciate as he comes to many The Lord is good. All the time. Amen. Can we give the Lord a mighty clap for the Lord? God in this place? Yes. Uh, do you like to worship the Lord? Yes. Amen. And we are so grateful to be here. Uh, my wife has already been introduced. She'll be sneaking out in a short while. I call her the joy of my heart. You know? uh, we want to thank God for the privilege and opportunity to be here. Uh, I was just looking around and I saw quite a number of good old friends. Uh, the Koyers, of course, we have come a long way. Uh, just acknowledging Pastor Gadesha here, uh, you know, this lovely couple here, Grace and, uh, uh, and Pastor Wanyeki. Would, would you want to just appreciate this, your pastors? Are they lovely people? I know you the church is not an easy deal, no? And so we thank God for you and for the Lord leading you and helping you. And of course, Pastor Mary, we have also come a long way with her. Alongside each other, and I just want to appreciate you. And of course, our elder, um, what do you call him again? Um, uh, yes, Otemba uh, is a man that we have served, uh, you know, in the family ministry. 
and uh, we love you so much. Just give me a minute, I sort out myself here. Wow. Greetings from Sitam Thicker Road. Have you received them? Yes. But then you know you are our baby. <laughs> we have two babies. There's one baby in uh, Sitam Clay City, and then this is our second baby. Uh, we, we feel we are part of this ministry and what the Lord is doing here. And so uh, when pastor invited me, I thought I was just coming to people that are familiar with me and people that I've uh, served together with. I know there are quite a number who moved from Sitam Thicker Road to here. I know you, I know I can see you there. And uh, it is okay because it's still family, amen? And uh, I can see some good friends like the miners there. Uh, all the way from uh, uh, Sitam uh, Woodley, those many days when we planted the church there. Are you ready for the word of God? Yes. I don't want to go into so many stories, but I sense and I feel that as pastors mentioned, this is a season of the Holy Ghost. We are living in times that are very unprecedented, and I want to believe that these are times that require the action of the Holy Ghost that require the anointing of the Holy Spirit for you to survive, for you to make it in this season that we are in. I'm telling you, it is not by power, it is not by might. You need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Whether it is in your place of work or at the home where you have a family, I'm telling you the matters and the issues that we are engaged in require the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I pray this morning by the grace of the Lord that you will be able to receive that baptism over your life. Whether you have been baptized before or you have never experienced Him even for the very first time. Whatever your status, I want you to know that every one of us, regardless of who you are, can receive this baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now I'm told your screens are not able to project what I have here, but follow with me. And I entitled my message this morning, Empowered by the Holy Spirit. Or if, you, or if you would, Empowered for Impact. Empowered for Impact. My name, I believe, have already been made known to you. I'm Reverend Ken Kimiwe, and I just love the Lord. Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8 is our main text uh, this morning. Uh, if you could just open it up there. Uh, we'll read it together and then go straight into the ministry of God's Word. Acts chapter number 1 and we are reading verse number 8. I read, But you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of of the earth. Father, as we share your word, I pray that you may quicken it to our understanding. I thank you for every man, every woman gathered here. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that is expectant, even as they look to you for that refreshing, for that anointing. Lord, may they never move out of this auditorium the way they came in. And I pray that their lives will not be the same again. Father, we thank you because of your blessedness and because of your presence that is even with us this day. We honor you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now today, by the grace of God, we are going to look at the reasons why we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Because sometimes when we talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit, some people remove themselves from it. And they think it is about the pastors, is about the worship team, is about the church elders and the deacons, and they remove themselves from it. But I want to appetize you, if you would. I want to stir your heart, if you would, so that you can get to see that you, in your own life, in your own personal walk with God, need this baptism of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. But just before I delve into the scriptures, allow me to tell you a story. I like to tell stories. But the joy is a good friend of mine. <laughs> uh, where is your good wife? She's within somewhere? Lovely. This couple, I, I walked with them when they were getting married. Way back in when? Yeah. 
Yeah. And did you love the worship this day? Yeah, that's, that's a guy I know very well. Now, there was Mr. King Lion. Now, King Lion is the king of the jungle. Is that not so? I hope you don't mind my moving around the place. That's me, okay? Allow me to do it my way. Eh? So, King Lion wanted to do an audit to make sure that everybody in the jungle knows that he's the king of the jungle. And so he went out there in the savannah and he looked at the animals that were grazing out there. He told them, fellows, moment. Whom do you know as the king of the jungle? And all the animals raised up and they said, Oh, you, King Lion, are the king of the jungle. And then he went on into the forest and he found the apes running and jumping from one branch to the other. And told the fellows, a moment. Now, who is the king of the jungle? And all the apes, you know, the gorillas and every one of them shouted, Oh, you king lion are the king of the jungle. And he left there, very satisfied, you know, with his ego way up there. And he came to this other side where he found some, some uh, you know, elephants that were grazing. And, you know, in their laziness, they are just taking this grass in there. And he told them, fellows, a moment. Whom do you know as the king of the jungle? And apparently there was dead silence. And then this huge male bull of the heart came and he got hold of Mr. Lion with his trunk and lifted him up there and he swung him and he swung him and then he put him down into this, the, the dust. And you know, Mr. Lion looked up, you know, to Mr. Elephant and told him, please, if you, if you didn't know who is the king or the lion, did you have to do all this mess? <laughs> now he didn't catch. <laughs> Power is often used as a tool of intimidation and subjugation. I don't know your experience of the power of the Holy Ghost. But I'm telling you, there are fellows who are full of the Holy Ghost and they can do some gimmicks. And they can do some theatrics. I was in one meeting where the guy had removed his coat and you know, I don't know where he got this theology from, but he was doing something like this and whenever he does something like this, everybody on this side just goes, oh, 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 oh. my goodness. And then he comes on this other side, he does like this and everybody goes, oh, 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 oh. There are others are telling you when they are prophesying is like you want to go under your chair. Because the power in which they are prophesying and what they are saying about what God is going to do, you wonder whether you will survive. <laughs> you know, there are others, they move around in the meetings and they just ask you to stand up. I I've seen that, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, you, 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 you. <laughs> there is that business deal that you are doing. Come, 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 come here, come here, come here now. And the whole service is about what this man did right or did not do right. It has been used as a tool of intimidation and subjugation. It is power to intimidate and to dominate, and should I say even to manipulate people. It destroys. That is not the kind of power that Jesus was talking about. Jesus promised and provided us with the Holy Ghost, the person of the Holy Spirit, as the power that will bring about the transformation that we need in our lives. Not to show off, not to uh, demean others, not to uh, you know, find yourself looking holier than thou. No, 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 no. It was not power for intimidating or to impress. It was power for impact. And somebody say power for impact. Allow us now to go into the scriptures that will move us on. Joel chapter 2 and verse 27. Joel chapter 2 and verse 27. The word of God says, if you could just follow with me very quickly. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. 
I want you to know right from the very onset as we go into this subject, there is nobody who is removed from this anointing. And this anointing is for all, all of us. It goes on to say your sons and your daughters. In other words, male and female are also going to be available to receive this anointing of the Holy Ghost. Did I hear an amen? And that they will prophesy and your old men will dream dreams and your young men will do what? Will see visions. That is the prophecy that Joel came up with. Allow me now to move you deeper into the subject here. Let's look at the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit is God's gift to every believer. I want you to underscore that. That every one of us that is in this place can receive this gift because it is a gift from God. In fact, the scripture say, and Jesus himself alluded to this, if your heavenly, rather, your earthly fathers know how to give good gifts to their children, if they ask for bread, they don't give them a stone. If they ask for fish, they don't give them a scorpion. How much more will your heavenly father give you the blessed Holy Spirit? In other words, even before you ask, it is His desire. He is willing to give you this gift that is available for every believer in this place. When a person believes in Jesus and receives salvation that He offers, the Holy Spirit comes and lives in the believer, imparting spiritual life. Is there anyone here who wants to be imparted with spiritual life? Then you are a candidate for this baptism. You see, there's something that the Holy Spirit does in us that we cannot do with so much reading of the Bible, with so much whatever other thing that we do in terms of our spirituality. It is only when we allow the Holy Spirit to come in us that He then overflows in us and brings us to the place where we can be vessels of honor unto the Lord. Somebody say Amen. amen. Let's move deeper. Let's look at the work of the Holy Spirit. And I believe our pastor here did a good job last Sunday. But allow me to build up on that. Now the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within the believer to minister to him or her personally. I want you to know that there is a personality issue here that you want to make so very personal about the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Thank God we are many of us here, but we know you need the Holy Spirit for yourself. There are several things that the Holy Spirit does in the life of a believer. And I want you to follow me as we look at nine different aspects. And I pray that this will appetize you, will provoke you to desire that anointing even in this place today. Somebody say Amen. amen. Let's go. Number one, He gives us an inward assurance of salvation. If there's anything that the Holy Ghost does in our lives, is to make us to be aware that we are sons and we are daughters of the living God. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 16, the Bible says, The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. In another portion of the Bible, it says that even as we worship God, the Spirit in us cries out our Father in affirmation of our relationship with God. And if there's anything that believers need in this age and time that we are living in, is the assurance of salvation. Because you see, it is not becoming uh, one of those very acceptable norms in our society. To be called a child of God, to speak in tongues, and to look like you're really faithful and you're given to the things of God, you almost look like you are the old one out. But you know, in these unprecedented times, as we face the challenges that are coming our way, we need to confirm in our spirits that we are indeed the sons and the daughters of who? Of God. Of God. That's the first thing that the Holy Spirit does in the life of a believer. He gives you that affirmation, that confirmation in your heart, in your life, that I am a child of God. And I want to provoke someone here as you go to your place of work, as you go to the marketplace where you serve, as you go to that school where you're a student or whether you're the lecturer, 
as you do whatever business that you do, come on out, do it like you are a child of God. Somebody say amen. amen. You don't need to be apologetic about it. You don't need to be sorry about it. I mean, if you have a board meeting and everybody wants you to have the board meeting start, don't be apologetic by prayer. Amen. Amen. If you, Amen. And you can begin that classroom by asking the boys and the girls, would you bow down and we pray? You know, the thing that is destroying the people in the West is they removed Jesus from the classroom. And because they removed Jesus from the classroom, Everybody is growing in whichever direction that they want to grow. There is no proper molding and shaping of these young people. And so I want to tell you something. Don't be ashamed about your salvation. Amen. Speak about it. Amen. Come on now. Somebody say amen. amen. I mean, stand out there. Let them count you as one who is born again. Amen. I need to move on faster. Number two. The other thing that the Holy Spirit does is that He teaches us all truth. How many of you want to discover all truth? You need the blessed Holy Spirit. John chapter 14 and verse 26 and 27, the Bible says, But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you everything that I've said unto you. The Holy Spirit of God is the one who quickens us. To understand all truth. And by the way, the Bible says that you will know the truth and the truth will do what? Will set you free. Now, this is not the truth that comes by academia, no. It is not the truth that comes by your age, no, no, no. It is not the truth that comes by your exposure. It is the anointing of the Holy Ghost over your life that gives you that revelation, that gives you that inspiration. In fact, the Bible says He gives us the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. Is a God who inspires. Is a God who illuminates our minds. And how much more do we need that illumination even as we go in these unprecedented times so that we can discern to know what is the will of God for our lives so that we can understand what decision we need to make in our judgment, whether at our place of work or as we face the various challenges that we encounter in our lives. We need the blessed Holy Spirit. Are there some young people here who are not married? Are there some young ladies who are not married? Can I speak to you a moment? My goodness me, you need the blessed Holy Spirit over your life so that you can know which is the man that you should be able to marry. Who is that lady that you should be able to marry? Can I talk to some businessman here? Oh my goodness me, not everybody who comes with a big deal has got the right proportion for you. Sure. You need the blessed Holy Spirit to design whether to engage or not to engage. We need that spirit of discernment. And I'm telling you people, the Holy Ghost is the one who gives us that ability to know that which is right and that which is Number three, the other blessing and benefit that we receive from the baptism of the Holy Ghost is that He helps us to live a life that is pleasing to God. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16, Paul writes and says, So I say, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify. Another version says, you will not satisfy the desires of the sinful nature. I don't know whether I'm the only one who has a problem trying to please God. But I thank God I'm not the only one because Paul alludes to the same when he says, when I want to do good, I find myself doing the opposite. My spirit is willing and the flesh desires what is contrary. And people, don't we find ourselves at that place where we are gaining between our spiritual life and whatever else the world is able to offer us? And we find ourselves juggling here and like this and that. I'm telling you, you need the anointing of the Holy Ghost to make the right judgment over your life. So I say, lead by the Spirit. Then will you not gratify or rather satisfy the desires of them? Paul again says that I subject this flesh. 
power by the Holy Spirit so that I can run the race that is fixed before me. There are so many things of this flesh that can pull you back, that can make you to be deterred, to be impeded from making progress in your Christian life. But can I just encourage you, please don't try to attempt that with your own strength and with your own understanding. Surrender to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to come in and help you with your challenge or whatever situation that you are struggling with. Number four. The other thing that the Holy Spirit does in our lives is that He empowers our prayers. I like this one. Romans chapter 8 verse 26 and 27. In the same way, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Holy Spirit Himself intercedes with us with groans that words cannot express. That is the spiritual language, or if you would, speaking in other tongues. When you find yourself at the point of prayer and you're not just praying the Kikuyu language that you know or the Kiswahili or the English, you find yourself stuttering into some other heavenly language. That is the anointing of the Holy Ghost over your life. And it is only the Holy Spirit who can give us that ability. I remember growing up as a young man and I used to struggle and I wondered, these guys, how, how, how come they have such energy to pray the way they pray? And then leave alone when they would call us to go for the whole night of prayer, I would wonder, what are they praying the whole night about? <laughs> praying the whole night? And I cannot do even 15 minutes. Maybe some of you, five minutes is enough when you pray for the food and that is all. Or when you go to sleep and you are trying to, to pray some prayer and then you wake up in the morning and you say, Amen. <laughs> now that is not the transformational kind of prayer. That is not the kind of prayer that takes away the devil out of your life. You know, even Jesus talked about, you know, there are certain demons that are so stubborn and you can only kill them, you can only destroy them through prayer and, and fasting. And I thank God, Pastor, you're going to have three days of prayer and fasting. Now, I, I like that. I wish I could be able to join with you. Because I know there are certain things that cannot move out of your life. They cannot budge until you go into praying and fasting. Did you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, Jesus told those guys, they were struggling with this demon, trying to exercise the demon. He told them, no, 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 no. this life does not come out. Only by prayer and... Can I talk to somebody here? Probably that husband will only come to salvation and prayer and yeah, probably that child who is wayward will only come back home and obey you through prayer and maybe that boss who is on your case or that colleague who is on your case will change their attitude towards you only through prayer and are you hearing me now? There are certain things that can only happen when we get to the Lord in prayer and fasting. I'm seeing somebody there telling me, my promotion, somebody has suffered it. Come on now, pray and fast about it. Oh, I have this, you know, you know, this mannerism, this habit that I keep on. Is if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give the life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. You know, these bodies need to die to self. These bodies sometimes need to be told, ah, you cannot take that. You cannot touch that. You cannot continue looking at this. Because, you know, there are things that we are looking, there are things that we are touching, there are things that we are feeling that we ought not to feel. And we can only tell our bodies, like Paul would tell his body, you cannot engage in this ones. Because our bodies are a living sacrifice that is supposed to be pleasing unto the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Are you catching the word this morning? Is the Lord ministering to you? Are you seeing the need why you need the Holy Ghost in your life? Yes, it is not just for the pastor. It is for you, Mama Boga there. It is for you, the executive in your boardroom. Every one of us needs this baptism of the Holy Ghost. Number six, he also gives power and boldness to witness. 
Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, we already alluded to it earlier, that says, but you will receive power. Not power so that you can speak loudly and with the tongues like nobody else. In fact, Paul challenges the guys in 1 Corinthians 14, me I pray in more tongues than you guys. So don't try to show me that you pray in tongues. In fact, he goes on in chapter 13 and he says, even though you prayed with the tongues like the angels, even though you gave your body to the flames, in other words, your matter, in other words, even if you prophesied and the whole earth shook and it was without love, you were just but love, a climbing symbol. It is nothing. And that is why even for those of us who are charismatic, those of us who are Pentecostals, those of us who are spirits, <laughs> we need to sober up and balance this act between the gifts and the fruit. You see, the fruit stabilizes the gift. Because it's your character that brings about the credibility of your charisma. Are you getting me now? Yeah. Yeah, because my sister, you cannot come to church and lift up holy hands and worship God like you are in heaven yourself. And then go back home Hallelujah. I need to finish that subject. Huh? No, no, let me not go there. We'll do that during the family emphasis month and see how we talk to one another, how we talk to our children. And you know, our character in the church is different from the one at home. Our character at our place of work is different from the one in the church. People know you as a believer in the church, but out there, oh, you are a different person. I was telling the men the other day, you know, when some of us claim that we are the heads of the family, and then we, when we come home, you know, some men, when they come home, everybody scatters. They go to hide. Including the mama, if she was watching, uh, you know, what do you call it? Huh? Zora or what? After cinema, she crosses the TV and everybody has to be all over the place, quiet. No, 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 no. That is not the love that Jesus is talking about. That is not the kind of fear that Jesus is referring to. When you come home and everybody has to stamp and has to change the way they do, my goodness me, you got it all wrong, my brother. And I like it when, if you're coming, everybody is at the window looking how daddy is coming. And before you open the door, they're already pouncing on you and saying, daddy, daddy, daddy. And they're asking, what did you bring me? Now, that is the kind of daddy we need. Not the daddy where everybody's campus and has to hide because, I don't know, the lion has arrived. But as if <laughs> Sorry, I like to be chemical a little bit here. But it's just bringing the word of God home. He gives us power and boldness to do what? To witness. Again, as I say, don't be apologetic about your salvation. Come on out at that counter as you're serving this person that is coming for their loan. Talk to them about Jesus. As you're in that matter to take you that long route down to the city. Instead of sitting with this guy there and just looking like as if you're strangers. Come on out. Opportunity. Man, lady, he has to sit down on that saloon chair as they're swinging their head all over the place. Come on, talk to that girl about Jesus. When you take your car for the car wash and these guys do a good job, instead of the tip that you're giving to him, tell him, you know what? You can have Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Are you hearing me, people? And that boldness only comes when you have the Holy Spirit in you. When you have the Holy Spirit in you. Number seven, I need to finish this. Why do we need the Holy Spirit? He gives us power for Christian service. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 6. The Bible says, And there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. 
There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works in all men in all of these gifts. And if you read the whole of that chapter 12, Paul goes on to enumerate the different aspects, the different ways in which we can express ourselves as we serve God. And I'm here to just encourage somebody probably who has been sitting there for so many years and you have continued to be fed that it is high time now you came on to this other side and started also being one who feeds others, one who blesses others. And how can you do that? By the blessed Holy Spirit. Instead of being passive, you can be active in the church. Instead of just being a member of the church, you can be a worker in the church. And I like the way some of those who serve us, serve us so diligently. I was telling people at Sita Mithika Road, please, when you see some of these people coming around, you don't think they are employees of the church. We only allow them to put on their red and their blue uh, jackets and also do some of the other things they do out there in the, what do you call it, the parking lot as as the traffic marshals, because they have that calling and they, they, they know that God has endowed them that ability to serve in that way. I remember one time there was this lady who was bringing her child to Sunday school and the way she was talking to one of the sisters who is a teacher in Sunday school, ah, you would sympathize with her house guard back at home. Some people need to know that these are just members of the church who have taken out their time to come and wait on your children, to come and make sure that your car is parked well so that if you have to leave and come in, you can go out in ease. Some of these men that you see serving us here and ladies in the red jackets, there are people who are just ordinary members of the church. And what am I trying to say? That you also, who has been ministered to, you can come out and become a minister. Somebody say amen. amen. And you can only do that through the power of the Holy Spirit. Number eight, we need to move very fast. The other thing that the Holy Spirit does is that he produces the fruit of the Spirit in the believer's life. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, is joy, is peace, kindness, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against such things there is no law. In other words, as you desire to be a man or a woman of integrity, a man or a woman of uh, good character, you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You need the Spirit of the Lord to help you, to help you, to manage yourself and to control your energy sometimes that run out of your control. Those passions that are within you that need fulfillment, you can be able to bring them to the place where they can be subject to the Spirit of God because it is Him who works in us both to will and to do according to His good pleasure. Somebody say Amen. Do you see the need for the Holy Spirit this morning? I pray that you will allow Him to come in so that he can help you to produce that character that draws people to you instead of people being repelled from you. You know, you know there are some of us who go boasting around and we're saying, you know, my grandfather, eh, eh, he was a man of high temper. In fact, in our family, you don't joke around with us. Now, that is not something to boast about. You need deliverance from it. Are you hearing me now? You need to be delivered out of it. Because you see, there are certain things that hinder our projection of who we are as the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And when we come to Jesus Christ, we must bring those things, those characteristics, those habits, those mannerisms, that some of them we have taken in because of our inheritance, because of our heritage. We can bring them to the place where we tell Jesus, take hold of this thing in my life. Help me to live a devotion and a, a devoted and a committed life to you. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen. Number nine and lastly, and I'm going to be praying with us in a short while, is that the Holy Spirit inspires praise and worship to God. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18 and 19, it says, Instead, be filled with the Spirit, 
speak to one another in psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs, sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. That one of the ways that we can be released and be liberated. Last Friday we were talking about liberty in the spirit in our in our time of prayer. We normally have every fourth Friday, every last Friday of the month, a time of just going into the presence of God and releasing ourselves. And our theme last Friday was liberty in the spirit. And then I want to tell somebody here, you can have that liberty in the spirit. He can remove you from the many constrictions of religious life and from those cultural and, and traditional things that are bound you and release you to worship him in the truth and in the, in the spirit. In the spirit. And I pray that even here at Sitan Kiambo Road, that you'll be a church when you come to time of just worshiping God and giving yourself to praise, you will do it without any reservation because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit that is in our lives. As I conclude, I want to say this. This is the age of the Holy Spirit. God wants to baptize both men and women. By the way, we are now in a, in a season of the woman, eh? I tell you now, you know, the other day when uh, Honorable Lady Justice Martha Coleman was taking over, you know, it looked very elegant. Wow. And somebody even said, the four people that were sitting up from there were all ladies. That's good. That's good. That's good. Hallelujah. Amen. It's now coming to the spiritual matters. You know, there are some churches, ladies cannot take any front seat here. Even, even there to come close to the pulpit, the holy pulpit. You see, it's only the man of God who mount that pulpit. And I want to thank God that in Sita, we believe in the woman also. Amen. It is not just the judiciary. We believe that the Holy Spirit that comes upon the men is the same Spirit that comes upon the women. And we can serve alongside each other. Can somebody give the Lord a mighty clap for that? And that is why Paul says, this is for both men and for women. There is no Holy Ghost for women and there is no Holy Ghost for men. All of us, as we desire that baptism of the Holy Ghost, we can receive him and we can speak in other tongues, whether male or female. He goes on to tell us whether young or old, we can receive this baptism. If you're here and you think you're just a teenager, my goodness me, you can also go into the spirit and worship him in fervency and with anointing of the Holy Ghost. Even the old people who are here, the golden ages, did you know it is Zerubbabel who said, yes, I am old, but I am saying you can give me this mountain. It is David who says, I was once young and now I am old and I've never seen the righteous of the Lord for second. In other words, he was saying, even now I can conquer, I can engage, I can do what I need to do, whether I'm 60 or I'm 50 and above, we can serve the Lord. We can serve the Lord. The power of the Holy Spirit as given to us by Prophet Joel was so that we can be empowered to serve God and to glorify Him in the world. Somebody say Amen. amen. Would you want to be upstanding together with me? And I want us to make this commitment. I would have screened it up here, but I just want you all over this place just to stand up. My time is almost done and we want to take some time and just go before the Lord and ask Him to feel us. As we say, this is not about the pastors. It's every one of us. Every believer can receive this baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the, 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 the mother in the home and the executive in the place of work, you know, the mama boga out there and whoever is the manager, wherever you are, you can receive this anointing that makes the difference in our lives. And so I want us to lift up our two hands as a sign of surrender to him. And I want you just to repeat these words after me. I say, thank God 
for the gift of the Holy Spirit in my life. I make a decision today to respond to the Holy Spirit, prompting and directing. I determine to learn to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit in my heart. I choose to be filled with the Spirit. I now open up my heart and my life to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now I just want you to start worshiping the Lord all over this place. Just start asking the Lord to fill you. Ask the Lord to touch you. Ask the Lord to move in your life in a new dimension this day. Just release yourself. Whether you have been baptized before or not, this is for every one of us. Whether you are young or you are old, whether you are male or female, come on now in this place. We want to just lift up our voices to the Lord. We want to lift up our hearts to the Lord. We are saying, oh God, I have been walking in the flesh, but today, oh God, I yield myself to the Spirit so that He can quicken me, so that He can help me to live a God life, to live a faithful life, to live a life of commitment, to live a life of integrity, to live a character that will glorify you. Lord, I offer myself to you so that I can be your witness, so that I can bring men and women to your serving knowledge, oh God. If there be any fear in me today, Lord, by your spirit, you have told me that you have not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Today, I even as a housewife, Lord, I yield my life to you as a manager. I yield my life to you, oh God, as your servant in your house, oh Lord, that I may not work out my things out of my own knowledge and understanding. I pray for the unction of the Holy Ghost over my life, over my business, over my family, over everything that I do. Even as I worship you, oh Lord, I pray that you may help me to worship you in the spirit and even in the truth. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, somebody just worship the Lord. Somebody just lift up your voice in the presence of the Lord. Don't be quiet about this. Just ask Him, the Holy Ghost, to come and take hold, to come and reside in you, to come and move in your situation, to come and move in your circumstances, to come and override every cloud of hopelessness, every cloud of depression. Father, we are open to you, Holy Ghost. Just come and take over. Come and take over. Come and release your anointing. Come and release your power. Come and release, oh God, your blessedness in this place today. In the name of Jesus. Come on, if you are already in the Holy Ghost, you can go ahead and pray in the Spirit. As the Bible says, and Paul says, I pray with understanding, but I also pray in the Holy Ghost. I see with understanding, but I also see in the Holy Spirit. Come on, just call on the Lord. That dryness, that lack of zeal, the Holy Spirit is what you need, my sister. That decision that you're about to take, my brother, don't lean on your own understanding. Just release yourself to the Holy Ghost because He is there to give you direction. He's there to give you discernment. He's there to give you inspiration.
Let the anointing of the Lord come down. Amen. Let the anointing of the Lord come down. Let the anointing of the Lord from heaven's come down. Yeah. 
Spirit, there are people here who need to come to this altar for whatever need, for whatever situation. You want to trust God? I'm telling you, you are overcome by some situation and you want to pray. Holy Ghost, help me. Just come to this altar. As we sing that song and keep the distances as we normally would be required. But if you need an anointing for a special thing in your life, for a special breakthrough in your life, just come to the altar. to the 
destroy every work of familiarity, to destroy every heritage that we have received from our ancestors, breaking loose every ancestral cycle in our lives. Hikaya la sakaya, emano kishare mahata kasaliba. Oh, oh, he must sit in the river. Hallelujah. Baba, oh, Abi, Yosha, Yosha, Kono, Kono, Wako, Baba, Wako, Some of them need the coming of the Lord in a powerful way, in a supernatural way. Pray for their families. Pray for their businesses. Pray for their finances. Pray for the Lord to heal them. Pray for the Lord to deliver their loved ones. Whether it be a wife, whether it be a husband, whether it be a child. Lord, we are believing you. That's why we have come to church, oh God. Not to play religious games. We have come to seek your face. Then take of all. Unless you touch us, unless you bless me, they are not moving out of this presence. Oh, yes, they cannot of old. I'm tired of being scolded. I'm tired of being looked down. Bless me with a child. I pray today, if there be any woman here who needs a child, Father, would you touch them, oh God? Touch her womb. Touch her life, oh Father. And produce that miracle in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Satan, you are a liar. We know that you come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And we are stepping against you now. You are not stealing away our families. You are not destroying our marriages. You are not come to confuse our children. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, King of glory, would you arise and may all your enemies be scattered? In the name of Jesus. Oh, Saw yourself mighty. Oh, the power of the Lord, our warrior. Oh, the battle belongs to the Lord, my sister. The battle belongs to the Lord, my brother. Just cast your cares on him because he cares for you. He cares for you. He cares for you. He cares for you. Release yourself to him. Forget about whatever formality. It is you and God. It is you and God. And thus the Bible says that those who come to him, let them believe because he is the reward of those who diligently seek him. The Bible says those who put their trust in the Lord, they shall not be put to shame. And Father, even as these people arise from this place, they will go out to victory. They will go out to your provision. They will go out to your healing. They will go out, oh Father, to the victory which only you give to us. Hallelujah. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, Holy Spirit. 
Noise. We cannot continue like this. It cannot be business as usual. We want to see a change. Lord, there are some of us who are stuck. In as much as we are thinking about the next level, they are stuck. They are stuck, Lord. They can't move. There is no next level for them. Oh God, I pray that you may release them from the place where they are stuck. From that vicious circle that they have been in, oh God. For that stagnation that they are in, oh Master. Release them. Release them, oh God. Release them, oh Father, into fruitfulness, into productivity, Lord. Lord, we are tired of the mad timing. We need to possess our positions in you. We need that next level anointing. We need that breakthrough, oh God. Touch everyone that is here today. Touch, Lord. Touch, Lord. Touch, Lord. Touch, Lord, we cry. We cry to you. The Holy Spirit is witnessing to me. There is somebody here. I don't know who you are, but the word that is coming to my mind is deadline. I don't know what deadline is. <laughs> you know, God is not limited in time. <laughs> he transcends time. Somebody, I don't know what is your deadline. I don't know what. It could be something that you need to submit. Some work that you need to do. I don't know whether it is a landlord that has given you a deadline. I don't know. But I sense in my spirit there are people here. There's somebody here who has a deadline. And something about the Holy Ghost is that He accelerates our blessings. And so what may not be here today, the Bible says He is one who speaks those things that are not and they become. And so Father, in the name of Jesus, for whoever has a deadline for whatever that it is, Father, may you override that deadline in the name of Jesus. May you come through because you are not the God who comes late or who comes early. You come on time. And in your own time, you make all things beautiful. And so may you arise on behalf of my brother. May you arise on behalf of my sister. We remove that deadline. We speak God's provision. We speak God's favor. Jesus, son of David, have mercy. 